In this video, we're going to look at how to drive a labor supply curve for a worker using a graphical approach. So here's our diagram. We've got consumption measured along the vertical axis in dollars and hours of leisure. We're going to assume that the person has 16 hours of leisure during the day to allocate between work and leisure because the person needs 8 hours for sleep. This straight line here is the budget line and this curve shaped line is the workers indifference curve. So first thing here is that the reservation wage is defined as the highest wage that a person chooses not to work. In this case here this person maximizes utility by getting on the highest indifference curve possible which happens at point A. Point A is the endowment point where the person does nothing but leisure getting 16 hours of leisure and has non-labor income of $20. So if this person doesn't work, they can enjoy 16 hours of leisure during the day and $20 of consumption spending. The budget line in this diagram uh, at the endowment point has a slope of minus 5. So just rise over run, 100 minus 20 here. So we got a rise here of 80. And then the run here is from 0 to 16 or 16. It's downward sloping, so it's negative. And so again, the slope of this budget line is minus 5. And as we know, the wage is the absolute value of the budget line slope. So in this case, the wage is $5. At $5, which is the reservation wage, hours of work is zero. That is going to be a point on the person's labor supply curve. Point B here is we're going to have a higher wage and this higher wage exceeds this worker's reservation wage so now this worker decides to work some positive level of hours in this case at point B the person takes 12 hours of leisure leaving four hours of work 16 minus 12 so at point A again uh, from the first slide wage was five dollars the person got on their highest indifference curve possible which was at the endowment point where they chose not to work. At point B, the wage here is now $12.50. So all we're going to do is calculate the slope of this budget line here. So 220 minus 20. So we got a rise here of 200. And we're going to divide it by the run here of 16. So the slope of the budget line is minus 12.5, which means that the wage is 1250. So as I said before, hours of work here, it's just going to be uh, 16 minus 12 or 4. Another thing to note here at point B, the marginal rate of substitution, the rate at which the worker is willing to trade away consumption for an hour of leisure, equals the wage. In other words, the slope of the indifference curve equals the slope of the budget line. Okay, point C. The wage here is $20. Going to be 320, 340 minus 20 divided by 16. Hours of work at point C is going to be uh, 6. Taking 10 hours of leisure, 16 hours in the day means the person is working 6 hours. Point D, we have even a higher wage yet. At point D, the wage is $26.25. Hours of work here is 16 minus 11, or 5. So in fact, hours of work fell from point C to point D. Going from point C to point D, the person chooses more leisure. So as the wage increased from $20 to $26.25, the person actually took more leisure. This person's labor supply curve then begins to bend backwards. So let's take all this information at, at points A, B, C, and D and use it to plot the person's labor supply curve. So here's going to be the person's labor supply curve. We got the wage up here and we got hours of work being measured along the x-axis. So at point A, the slope of the budget line here, ignoring the minus sign, is $5. So that's the wage and the person chooses not to work at point A. Hours of work is zero. So point A is one point on the person's labor supply curve. Point B, the budget line got steeper. The wage increased to $12.50. And the person decided to work a, some uh, positive level of hours here, four hours of work. The wage increased further. 
at point C here, the wage is now $20, and the person decided to work six hours. At point C, the person's taking 10 hours of leisure, so 16 minus 10 means six hours of work. And finally, at point D, the wage increased uh, even more. Now it increased to $26.25. Remember that the slope of the budget line here, ignoring the minus sign, is just a wage. And so at point D, uh, the person is taking 11 hours of leisure with 16 hours in the day. That means five hours are allocated to work. So here is the person's labor supply curve. And as I mentioned before, it does bend backwards here. Okay, I will stop here.